Hey guys, welcome to the Nectar Particle Tutorial. I've been waiting to do something with Canvas for a long time. All the functionality for this is contained within the Page Header Settings meta box you can find when editing or creating any page. Scrolling on down, you can see that there is now two additional tabs that have been added in version 6.0 for video backgrounds and the HTML5 Canvas. We're going to activate that and you can see that a new field for particle images has appeared. Clicking on the Add Edit Images button, a familiar WordPress gallery motor will pop up. From here we're going to want to go over to the left hand section and click on Add to Particle Shapes. Here you can see that I've already uploaded two example images that we're going to use in this tutorial. So I'm going to click on these and start editing the attributes that we need. As you can see in the right hand side there's a ton of things for us to configure and play around with. But first let's talk about some basics. For anyone not familiar or hasn't seen an example, head on over to the Agency Demo and go to the Home Particles section. Essentially, you upload some images, it'll actually map that image with particles that are interactive to mouse movement. Now to get this out of the way, speaking specifically about what types of images and what sizes to upload, it would make the most sense when using multiple images that you keep them around the same size. This is because the functions that actually control the density of particles on varying screen sizes calculates that density based on the actual dimensions of the image. Therefore, if you upload an image that's suitable for a desktop background, such as around 1600 pixels wide, when viewed on a tablet or a phone, the ratio at which that image is going down will ensure a good amount of particles are still used. Now, more importantly, speaking of what types of images should be uploaded, how it works is that basically anything with the color white will be excluded from the particle mapping. Anything else will be stored as a point. Now the more complicated that your images are, the more particles will be stored and drawn, which obviously means less performance. This is why it's recommended to keep the shapes that you upload to just that. Shapes, logos, small text snippets, but please, whatever you do, try and refrain from uploading your favorite family vacation photo from the summer, as that will end up rendering so many particles that the performance will send users right off the page. So now that we've covered the ground rules, let's go over and take a look at the attributes that we have. We'll simply take a look at them one by one and examine what they really do, since some of them might not be as obvious as others. The color mapping option offers you three choices, original, solid color, and random. If you choose original, then in these two cases, the particles will be drawn as black, as the original colors in the image found, excluding white, will be kept as is. Now if we switch this over to solid color, we can actually enter in a specific color, in hex format that all the particles will then turn to. Now the third one, random, I threw in there for fun. I'm going to change this one to solid color and actually enter our particle color for this example. I'm going to use a bright blue and let's talk about the alpha really quick. So by default each one of your particles will have a value of 1 for the alpha, meaning that they're all going to be the exact solid color that you've set explicitly here or the absolute regular value of the original color that it was uploaded at. Changing this to random will actually go through each one of the particles and assign a random alpha value, which will make your shape appear to have a little bit more depth. For this example, I'm actually going to leave it on original. The particle density option simply will control how many particles are drawn overall. And then we have the max particle size, which defaults to three. This is just how many pixels the diameter of your particle will be. And we need to set and now we need to set a background color. Also in hex format, I'm going to enter a dark blue, and that pretty much completes the attributes for the particles themselves. Now we have the title and caption, which would be overlaid on top of the particles as seen in the demo, but because this particular particle shape is already text, I'm just going to delete that and save what we've done. As you can see, our particles have indeed formed our text that we've uploaded. Now what I'm noticing is my initial guess for the particle size and density while high performing was a little bit incorrect for the look we need on this page. Since we're dealing with a text shape, we would like this to be very well defined. And right now, from close up, it's kind of hard to read. So going back over into our particle images, I'm going to re-click on the salient text and we're going to up the density to high and lower the particle size by one. 
we can now update the page and we should see that it is a bit easier to read. Let's go back into our particle shapes and actually add the logo into the gallery. And now from here, I am going to add some text just so you can see what it would look like. And this time, let's just cycle through a few options. Let's make the background color dark and let's change this to a random color mapping with a medium density and three for the size. Now when we go back over to the front, so here we have our first shape, which is the text, and now that will nicely transition over into the logo with the text that we've added. Pretty nifty. Playing around a little bit further, we could even switch the order of the shapes if we felt like it. And here I'm going to change the color mapping out of random onto a solid color. Use this example for the particle color. And let's take a look at what the random alpha looks like. I didn't really like how that text looked at all on top of this with the alignment and typography settings, so I'm just going to delete that really quick so that we can look at the raw shape. Heading back over into the front, we should now see the logo appear again, but we can notice that the particles have a random alpha value, whereas these are all the same bright color that we selected. Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps it up. I'm really excited to see what you guys create with this. I mean, there's a ton of potential with a ton of different options that I probably haven't even thought of. Anything from just using it as a single shape to show off your logo, a series of words that create a sentence. Just go crazy, have fun, and enjoy Salient 6.0. Cheers, guys.